Um, for everything Android application, you probably is good to start by checking Android Manifesto SML. Well, I see a lot of uh, few, one of the products that try to have you know generic detection of uh, application behavior by passing the Android um, Manifesto SML like it. Because normally at this um, file, they have a permission request like a, if I want to access to your SML. Uh, so SMS, um, you know, folder or, or local uh, location API and so on and so forth. So you're gonna have uh, defined it as, as the Android Manifest SML, and it also define entry point. Like if I, when you click on this uh, application, when it goes first, right? What, what is the function that's gonna be triggered by by the application first, all right? Again, our easy solving. Of a puzzle. Uh, well, I normally start with uh, you know names of string. Uh, try to look at stuff like net crypto server or IO input. Uh, it's much easier. And of course, you, you probably need to check on suspicious or and, uh, of Android API. Like um, for SMS application, probably you don't need to have access to mail or email API, right? Or or, or network API, something like that. So you need to check on, on suspicious Android API call as well. And of course, when you have all this information, you, uh, you, you're gonna do like a, browse, a browsing the code and trace function call chains, or in, in typical reverse engineering, we call it X reference. So you need to do some cross, uh, you know, check on the function that being called, which function that pass parameter, and so on and so forth. All right, uh, so a couple of case study. Happy family of Android malware. So, uh, SMS Trojan is all this Android malware. It's the first one, uh, at least in the public, that I saw, probably a bunch of it that I never saw. So feel free to share the sample if you have. A uh, very simple, if you take a look at the project, it have like application one, something which is typical Hello World uh, Android SDK tutorial. So use social engineering to treat people, so by nature it's a malicious application. Right, they perform tools, uh, send that prop to Russia, uh, something like a premium short code, a tool touch to an user, send the short code to number 35 way and then 35 pop. Well, by having this is a good reason to have baby on mobile, I guess. It's also a selling point by antivirus software. So you probably ask Geo and, and Tillman this as well. All right, so. That is uh, on the SMS Trojan, uh, SMS Trojan. Another one you have the GDB, it's just kind of close to New Year Eve. When a lot of people make a prediction like the 2010 is gonna be hot by mobile malware. Uh, yeah, eventually they got, you know, feel free the prediction. <coughs> to the Eve, there is uh, people discover some, you know, a GDB being spread on top of uh, top third party, um, you know, hosting instead of uh, ma Android market. So Modus Brandy is basically try, uh, is infecting legitimate software like a monkey jump to that position and blah 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 a couple more. Our features is uh, encryption, it's rely on encryption. It's interesting to see <coughs> why this guy goes by doing encryption on, on implementing that. I mean, as we know, phone is pretty much quite slow with device. So if you have implementation on that, um, it's gonna drop the performance. And quite funny as well to see that every single data been, uh, been encrypted and each communication node should be encrypted as well. So yeah, it's, it's have a CNC server, it have a info stealer, and the first, I would say, Android malware that have a, uh, in a bot capability, which is receive instruction, the response instruction, and do whatever been instructed. Uh, like I said, it's uh, encrypted communication. Uh, well, it's uh, using dash, uh, it encrypted the CNC data, uh, as well as a bunch of data that you need to play around with. Uh, this is the key. Uh, and then another one is uh, the data. It's just a portion of it. So like I said, I mean, if you, you're talking about this, if you have source code, I mean, if you implement some encryption in, in this way, eventually it's going to be broken as well. because. We know the keys and that's it, right? Unless you are pretty much go like PKI stuff, it's gonna be a challenge. 
All right, so this is a bunch of uh, Java stuff. When you do crypto, uh, you have a, uh, you know, get a keys, generate secret, and do final for encryption. And then this is a Ruby implementation. You just dump and, and work it forward. And then this is the, the CNC that's been used for the, uh, you know, CNC server communication. Uh, it's happening for Stellar, it's staying for Impact SMC server. Again, using encrypted data, a bunch of data is still EMA, uh, MSI, duplication, lag and long, uh, same as contact list, and it's also still some, some sort of install application list as well. Uh, there is more stuff that has been, you know, uh, still by this Jamie, but uh, just, I just put a couple of it. Uh, you have bot capability, uh, receive command from CMC server like a, DS, a DSMS, is delay SMS, uh, SSM record to steal SMS record, show URL is open URL for you, uh, and call, make a phone call, it's very interesting, and also to install, to do uh, to install application. Uh, it's also have state of the bot, like um, you start, you, you should start the bot application, you download, you download the application, pass, to pass the, um, a config, uh, in a config instruction from the CNC and Tenscape and also IDO to IDO. I mean, if you're talking about phone, mobile phone, it's crazy to have constant connection, right? Because it's obvious, I mean, it's gonna have a problem with network, so also problem to maintain a connection. Like if you go somewhere, do a roaming, you're gonna have like a lot of charges, so it's gonna create some uh, red flag, I would say. Um, so encrypted communication, every data uh, received, sent, or encrypted uh, is abandoned into param parameters and is based on HTTP based for, uh, HTTP protocol. But then it just encrypt uh, the data from the param parameters. Um, quite interestingly, it also have a backdoor. Uh, so listen on port uh, 5432, 4501, and 6543. Uh, and there's another backdoor on port 5791. It's sent to high zillion. It's look of Chinese, but I don't want to speculate anything. Just because it has Chinese characters doesn't mean it's from Chinese, right? So I don't want to speculate anything, but the, it's to establish the connection. It's sent uh, high zillion and then send high vision to respond to the message request. And quite surprisingly, it's been designed to listen on look back interface. I don't want to speculate anything about that, but then for me it's kind of weird. You have backdoor, but you're running on, on you know, look back in the face? I don't know. Um, and then you have another recent one is uh, Dream Droid. Uh, let's put addition to Android now, a family, a model that apparently is still tracking legitimate software. Nothing is posted at market, official market, uh, you know, places. So, I believe in 53 uh, software infected, uh, the first of the weekly discovery, um, uh, some security guys discovered this, uh, Google you know, managed to drop a couple of um, infected software, but then within two days after that, uh, someone else registered with a, di a different developer names and put it again. So overall we have roughly about 53 software infected been uploaded to the uh, market store. Um, interesting enough, it's a bundle with uh, two exploits. Uh, the first one is Explode on CBE 2009-1185, uh, which is to root the box, uh, basically to, to root your Android. And another one is Rush Against the, the Case. Well, the CBE is quite funny, but that's just the CBE in the water in use. So CBE 2010 easy. And uh, it also have a bot table here for. Um, Features again is an uh, encrypted communication with Zor. Uh, encrypted data as well, half port capabilities, two stages of payloads. I mean, this is interesting uh, because the first payload is infected software. I mean, you have infected. Uh, <coughs> all right, I'm done. Uh, I mean, so, you, you have, um, I mean, the first app to root the device and install the second payload. The second payload is normally uh, been hired into SQL like a TV. It's, just, just a finance, but it's eventually just a, you know, legitimate application for Android. Uh, so recent instruction from CNC, 
uh, the standing for TNC sound only installed itself, which is if you least install application, you don't be able to see this because it's going to install somewhere uh, within the system app by just copying the file. Okay. Um, uh, this is encryption. So operation, you have a key, you have data, and this is just review or um, you know CNC data. This is 184. Uh, send a bunch of information like email, ISMA, uh, MC, device model, SDK equation to send the server. Uh, this is encryption. Uh, like I said, if you're looking for crypto, good luck finding this because it's, uh, you know, uh, I would say customized ZOR XOR operation. So grabbing string is not going to be nice as well. Uh, you, you still need to look at the code by, uh, you know, by itself. Well, challenge and issue when working with the uh, reverse engineering Android app uh, of malware is this typical reverse engineering challenge. Like uh, you have good obfuscation, obfuscation on data, and so on and so forth. And of course, encryption makes it harder, but eventually it will be broken as for the current sample that we have. I mean, you can easily spot that uh, this is using this method and so on and so forth. It's, it's, it's the reversible. Um, so for, for now, it didn't have any problem other than Mac, the analysis is more difficult. Uh, code optimizing is basically for device uh, speed, but it's going to be painful for the reverse engineering. Uh, like, um, you know, uh, maybe I can show you a few stuff later on. Uh, the tool is there, but I would say it's not yet matched. Like, um, we don't have idea to um, RV speed yet, but then uh, something like that's the right function for, for you to easily trace and so on and so forth, it's not there yet. Challenge and issue against spotting the malicious app, not a problem, but how do you spot the malicious app? I mean, a few, that, uh, David mentioned that probably a good approach to crawl into a Google market and, you know, fix any application and then try to reverse. Uh, you can check some file on that. Uh, another challenge is the remote install via market will be interesting to have this as well. I mean, I, I've been mentioned about this, so yeah, I guess it's quite interesting. <coughs> see that as well. So conclusion, I need to be very quick. Long time, I guess. Uh, Android malware is an interesting topic. I would say more complex Android malware are expected. Uh, more exploit on and Android are expected. More powerful hardware will totally change the landscape. And is it possible to reverse Android malware? A lot of free tools available there. Again, solve the puzzle. And reversing tools are there, but just to mention. So, I mean, this is probably good focus on this tool. So this is Q&A.